Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to the Ancient Legends Challenge. In the last episode, despite our tribe's fears, Komina had her very first child. Genevieve was blind just like she is, but thanks to her digging trunk as well, she is going to be excellent at smelling out dangers in the darkness. She'll be able to find us predators who might be lurking about, she'll be able to find us plenty of roots too. And I think she'll even be able to sniff out any potential healing fruits, so I'm super excited to bring their family over to the mountain. But perhaps more importantly, we did also find a tiny little chocolate bird. Little Cuckoo fell from, I'm assuming, the oak tree. He was actually lurking right behind our nests over here, so I wonder if, because he only has one wing, maybe he wasn't able to fly back up there with his mother. For that matter, maybe his mother is even gone. Maybe that's why he was lurking around the nest, because he wanted to have a mother too. So he was a little bit jealous of all these babies. But it looks like Glacier Paw has a nice bunny meal to scoop up for us, so go ahead and pick that guy off. Oh, are you going to do a little bit of singing for your new friend? Shadowfire is trying his best to make friends with Cuckoo. He is a little bit skittish after all, so hopefully they can convince him to stick around so we can invite him on the next turn. Everybody else is a little bit too far away after all. We have Diego, who's just concerned with this bunny meat. Oh, and Luna. Look at this, you might have your chance to prove yourself after all. Oh no, the bunny still stole the berry. I was hoping that she could impress Rex, because just like his father, Rex is very particular about his berries. I think he can tell that you were trying though. I mean, Luna has tried so, so hard to impress him ever since she was really young, and I think this is the closest that she's gotten yet. Of course, ironically, this is also the closest she's gotten to just not caring anymore. She realized in the last episode that she was kind of not taking care of her duties. She's supposed to be a guard after all, and her brother was unfortunately injured under her watch. So now she's taken it upon herself to really work at, like, guiding him correctly. So she's going to stay in his shadow, make sure nothing jumps out to harm him. And I guess they're going to lead him straight over to these stinky fruit trees again. I know that Shelby would love to see this. I wonder if we could guide her over there too. Though for that matter, I feel like she would be even more interested in these babies. If she learns that they could potentially sniff out the healing fruits, I think she would really like to get to know them. And they're going to need somebody to guide them around anyways, because without somebody to light up the darkness, they won't be able to move. That's probably something that Avalanche has in the back of his mind right now. I mean, I feel like he is just over the moon. He probably loves having these little babies in the nest. In fact, why don't we go ahead and have them have another? We could bring Komina way over here. The baby should be safe, of course, because we don't have any bluebirds in the skies. It seems like bluebirds can't spawn on Whale Island, probably because they can't chase the whale as he's swimming through the ocean. So we shouldn't have to worry about the little baby being unprotected. But all the same, this would be a good chance for Shelby to swoop in just to make sure everything is okay. Ooh, and Cuckoo's getting braver. Oh, I saw you looking over here, little one. I'm glad he's not getting too far away. He seems to be circling around the same area, just doing laps, checking out the locals, making sure our tribe is safe. Everybody is just keeping their distance at this point. They don't want to spook him off, I guess. But you know, we could have some of our hammer tails crack open those acorns. I bet he would love that as a snack. That's something that Solaris liked too. He enjoys, like, acorn caps as offerings. So since this little baby has the wings as well, I wouldn't be surprised if he's connected. Let's have Florence go ahead and knock down some more of these toxic berry bushes, now that Luna has put the idea in her mind. And then I think we just have Diego to go. Let's see if he can sniff out any more of those roots. It looks like we might be unfortunately bare. I mean, I guess we could bring him up this way so we could pick up the meat. He can't crack open. Oh, wait a second. Yes, he can. He doesn't have the hammer tail, but he does have the cracker jaw. So we could have him pick up those acorns instead. I think we're all out of turns now. So as Cuckoo lurks in the background, let's see what this new little baby is going to look like. It's one of the very few times where we're actually hoping for those blind eyes. Oh, and he has the mask too. Oh my goodness. Oh, the red mask with those blind eyes. 
How eerie does that look? And his horns are a bit lighter than most of his family's. I guess that would be Komina's influence. Her antlers are a bright white color, just like the snows of the mountain. So I wonder if that would be a good sign for them. Oh, he is super cute though. Let's pick out a name for him too. The next name on my list is Dirge. So welcome to the tribe, little one. I'm sure that you are going to enjoy sniffing around the mountains with your big sister. But of course, that was Glacier Paw's very final day. And I find it quite fitting too that he passed away right next to the nest. He was the one who had the most reservations about the joining between his son and Komina. So it's nice to know that he truly accepted them in the end. Enough to just sit by her and enjoy the company of his grandchildren in his final days. Now before we go any further, let's make sure that we invite Cuckoo. It seems like he is a very interested in getting to know you, Shadowfire. So let's have you jump up here. There we go. You can sing a song to invite him into the tribe. Offer up some of that food. And that should be the wings, right? Because we've invited a creature with the wings, I think that means we have it in our mutation menu to use. Excellent. So who should we give the wings to? Obviously, whoever Cuckoo takes on as a mate will probably receive the wings in their mutation menu. But I'm curious which family you guys think should see the wings first. I mean, it would be so, so cool if the creatures with the heat body had the wings too. Not only would they look like little phoenixes, of course, but they could swoop around the skies and help by carving pathways to those who might be lost. That would be a good way for us to get to the glaciers as well. I mean, as long as they could land near them, they could basically ensure that we don't lose them out in the snow once it does start to pile up. So that is definitely a possibility. But let's go ahead and start picking up the meat over here. We can move Komina out of her nest, maybe paying her respects to Glacier Paw. I wonder if somebody could bury him too. He did such a good job burying his fallen tribe mates. I feel like it's kind of the least that we could do. But it really just depends if we can actually find any roots. Oh, Diego, I think you may have used them all up. Well, you're going to have to come over here then and pick up all of these acorns for us. That's going to be your job for now. Honestly, it would be great if we could take out one of the babies to find some roots. Maybe that's what Avalanche has in mind. We'll bring him over here so he's on the other side of his baby. And then you two can go on a little adventure together trying to find a place to bury your grandfather. Kind of bittersweet when it's put that way, I guess. I suppose this works out for Shelby's story too because we do have another stinky fruit tree over here. So she could even pick from that one instead, as long as somebody wouldn't mind looking off all of those stinky juices. Let's bring her over to this side of the tree as well. I guess we could have her knock down some more of those acorns. There we go, plenty of acorns for you to eat. Yeah, if any little birds were still up there, I bet they would fall right down with one swing of that mighty hammer tail. I wonder what Cuckoo thinks of all this since that was where his home was. Maybe we should have him swoop over too. Though with him being so shy, I wouldn't be surprised if he just hides behind the birch trees, peering nervously from between them as everyone gathers its acorns. His bird beak won't allow him to crack them open, but it should allow him to collect some berries and also do a little bit of digging. So maybe we need to bring him over to one of the berry bushes instead. He could show off his special skill to Shadowfire, maybe as a way to impress him. Now I think we're going to want Florence to catch up with the rest of the tribe. In fact, I bet she would be super excited to see so many new little babies here. She is our mother hen after all. Maybe we should bring her to meet Cuckoo first. I mean, he could use a little bit of a motherly influence in his life. Maybe that would give him the confidence that he's lacking. Now I suppose Rex would offer up his thanks for Luna's help, since he has taken notice of her efforts. We'll have him go ahead and pick up this meat, I suppose clear out a little bit of the extra grass around the rocks. And that's probably leaving her more confused than ever. Like she thought she was over this, but now she is not so sure. I wonder if her own brother Star Wisp would notice. Maybe he sees that she's a little bit distracted right now. So as he picks up some of those stinky fruits for the road, he'll ask her what might be going on. Of course, I think she's a little bit too embarrassed to explain it in full, especially to her own brother of all people. So all he can really do is offer up the same advice that he took himself. Action is the only way to get what you want. 
You can't just sit around and mope all day. You can't be hesitant. You have to just go straight up to your dreams and seize them yourself. Maybe that'll be enough to light a little bit of a fire underneath there. Maybe she'll be a bit more willing to actually speak to Rex on the next turn. Now we can have Shadowfire go ahead and sing for a little while on top of his stump. We might as well, since there aren't really any roots for him to try to paw at. And I think we'll go ahead and leave Komina right there, as we go ahead and skip the day once more. Now we haven't seen any Baryinas in quite some time, and that has me a little bit concerned. As we know, Animeme does like to challenge us as we get closer to the ports. And I think I might have heard the whale sing a bit of a strange song again. That was that same almost growl that I heard before. I wonder if perhaps that was a warning. Maybe the Baryinas are on their way and the whale can just sense it. Well, I can't see that deterring Shelby too much. She is just far, far too interested in this new family. So as we change their gems over to the respective colors, let's have her start leading her toward the stinky fruit tree. For that matter, let's have you go ahead and pounce on this bunny first, just so it doesn't get any ideas about stealing our potential food. I guess Avalanche could come down here and collect it for you. That way you'll have enough energy to lead Genevieve straight over to the stinky fruit tree. So let's see if she can smell anything out this way. Oh my gosh. Oh, bunny kingdom. Oh, I did not realize we had so many bunnies around here. Thank goodness she is so good at smelling. And it does look like we found some roots out here too. So there's a couple of places where they could potentially bury her grandfather. Yeah, those bunnies are a different concern. I mean, the only food sources they're really going to be stealing from are these berry bushes, and I guess not too many of our creatures are concerned with those. But the meat would make an excellent addition to our stores. So maybe it's time to send some of our hunters out in that direction. But let's have Florence come on over here and meet little Cuckoo before the day is done. Maybe she was even lured over by Shadowfire's wonderful singing. And you might as well lunge down and scoop up this bunny for us. It might not be the acorns that Cuckoo was hoping for, but I think he was still mighty impressed. Oh no, and it looks like we're leaving our newest little baby in the dark. Poor little Dirge and his mama too. We have to make sure that we have somebody sitting next to them at all times as well. If there are any Baryinas lurking about, we certainly don't want them to be surprised by it. We'll have Diego go ahead and pick up some more of those acorns, and then I guess scoot back here for now. Just so this area is lit up for the night time. And then I suppose it's time for Luna to actually act on the advice that her brother gave her. So let's have her scoop up one of those stinky fruits, and then leap atop the stump. Maybe she'll call out to Rex so he can join her. He'll pick up some of those berries and scoot on over here too. We could have him clear out a little bit of the extra grass as they talk. Maybe she would ask him if he wants to go hunting? Since we know there are so many bunnies out there, I guess that would be the best way for those two to bond. I'm sure that Star Wisp is very proud that his advice worked in a way, but for now, all we can really have him do is pick up some more of those stinky fruits. We'll have somebody lick off those juices on the next turn. Oh, actually, why don't we bring Komina over there to do that? Then she won't be alone anymore, and it's not as though our leader has met Komina and her family yet so I do want them to get to know each other. The only problem is we don't really want to leave Dirge all alone either, so let's bring him over here, and I guess we'll have Cuckoo leap down from his throne. Maybe he could play around a little bit with the baby too. Oh my goodness, and she's going to have to just like shove away all of this tall grass before she can break her way through. There you go, little one. Settle down next to those stinky fruits. I'm sure it was the smell itself that lured her near. She can probably smell it just like clinging to his fur right now. I guess whoever is near her would have to mind their hygiene because she is so overly sensitive to it. Now let's go ahead and skip the day again and cross our fingers that the whale wasn't warning us about Baryinas. I don't see any yet. I didn't hear any growls, so I think we might still be in the clear. All right, so first things first, why don't we have Shelby go ahead and pick up some of those stinky fruits, just like she was planning to. We could have Genevieve go ahead and lick off some of those juices, and then we'll have Avalanche go toward the roots that we found before. I do feel like he should be the one to actually dig out the grave, so we'll go ahead and dig up this root right here, 
and that should give him a little bit of time to mourn before we move on. I don't want Shelby to collect too many of these stinky fruits without somebody to lick off the juices, so we might actually leave her right there as is. I don't want her to move away from it either, and we don't have any extra roots to try to pop from the ground, so you're going to have to leave your two turns right next to the stinky fruit tray. And Komina, of course, you can go ahead and lick Star Wisp too. I'll have him pick up a couple more so you can lick off the rest. There we go, we have to be so, so close to the purse now, now. Oh, just five more actions to go, and then we can set up our creatures over here on the ports. So if we have any last minute love blossoming on the island, now might be the time for them to act upon it. I am thinking that Florence has taken a particular shining to Shadowfire. Not only are they compatible in immunity genes, but he also has a bit of a fatherly aspect to him, doesn't he? He managed to take Cuckoo in under his wing, and she being the mother hen that she is, I think she would notice that quite quickly. So let's make sure that we keep those big horns on their babies. We'll go ahead and place that into Shadowfire's mutation menu, that way it'll be a little bit more likely that we'll see them. And I suppose we should probably try to keep that digging trunk on them too. So many of our families have the digging trunk right now, but it's really Rex that I want to pass on those saber fangs. We'll get to him in just a moment. Now as for Florence, honestly there's not very much here that I see that we would need to alter. I like that she's a little bit faster, but with her big body that would slow her down. So maybe we should keep the runner's leg on them, the velvet paws. She's not much of a fighter after all, so I can't see her babies going after balance spears in the mountains. I guess the most we could do is just change around their patterns. Maybe we could try to give them a different color like we did for previous families. Let's go for a nice bright pattern, and then maybe a different eye color too. She has the green eyes in her inactive traits, he has the brown eyes. Let's go ahead and try to weasel some yellow eyes onto their babies. Oh, I don't think we've seen yellow eyes in quite some time. We'll see if we can pull that into their inactive traits at least. So why don't we have you sit on top of the stump? We could have you build your nest right up here. That might be a good spot. That way you can gaze down at all the babies and make sure nobody is getting into any trouble. Dirge can take his second gem. I suppose we would want him to get a little bit closer to his mother. We could even have him help out his mother by licking off those stinky juices. Both of them can tell right away that somebody is very stinky in the tribe. That means you should be safe to go back to your acorn collecting. Or perhaps go back to pouncing on bunnies. He's not strong enough to take them down in one swipe, but at least that'll leave this bunny a little bit weaker. So maybe if it hops in Shelby's direction, she can finish it off. I definitely want Cuckoo to stay right by the nest too. I feel like he's just part of the family now. We'll bring him over here so we can at least pick up a little bit of that grass. But then it's over to our saber soldiers. So they were going to go hunting together, even though the bunnies are pretty far away. Well, maybe there's some hidden bunnies out there that you guys just can't smell yet. So we'll bring shiny Luna all the way up to these nests and we'll have Rex try his best to follow. He can even clear out the grass all around the nursery. That way they can run straight at the bunnies as soon as they see them. But even though it doesn't seem like there's very much to chase, they must be having fun just spending some time together. I feel like now that Rex is actually paying her some attention, he must enjoy her company immensely. I guess he didn't realize how lost in his own world he was. And you know, now his very best friend is just about to have a baby too. Let's go ahead and skip the day and see what her baby's going to look like. Oh, it looks like you have the crocker jaw, just like your father. I'm kind of surprised, actually. I expected to see the digging trunk instead, but that's okay. That means that she'll be able to pick up tons and tons of shells on the next island too, and hopefully even some more of these acorns if we happen to have a good oak tree. I think we'll probably go to one of the easier mountain islands first, just because that gives us more wiggle room to work with. Then we'll have even more mountains to go to if we don't find the genes that we need. I can't decide if it looks like she is terribly, terribly sunburnt, or if all those little pink dots are like flower petals on her fur. To be honest, I think I'm probably going to have to go with sunburnt. Like, this poor little baby is already over this relentless whale island heat. She has no love for Melody and her flames. Her name will be Rivera. 
Welcome to our tribe, little one. Hopefully you'll be off to the mountains soon, where it should be much cooler on your fur. Oh, and little Cuckoo is all grown up now, too. He has all three of his magnificent gems, so maybe it's time for him to do a little bit more exploring away from the nest. He could even light up the way for his family, if we bring him up here. Ah, and he found one of those delicious roots. Well, honestly, Florence would probably be a little bit better at digging those up, so we'll have her go ahead and pick that up for you. But yeah, if you could come down here, I guess you could be the first one to light up these ports for us. We could even have him plant his feet right down in those flowery ports, leading them straight over to the end of Whale Island. I think it goes without saying that he's going to be going with us, but it's kind of sweet that somebody so timid and skittish ended up being the first one to explore it. I guess Florence must really be doing her job. She must have instilled a little bit of that confidence in little Cuckoo, just like we were hoping that she would. Now I think some of our very final licking action should be on this turn too. Two more for you. Go ahead and pick some more. And then we'll have Avalanche lick that off as well. Then last but not least, if we have Star Wisp, just go ahead and pick up one more of those stinky fruits. I think that should be enough. Was it enough? Yes, that should officially be the purse now. So while it might not be one of our ancient genes, it is going to be very, very valuable for our tribe. That way, when we do get to those tougher mountains again, where we won't have access to any of the healing fruits, we'll have the purse notes to make sure that all of our tribe mates are healed instead. So that means, Star Wisp, you can officially leave these stinky fruit trees behind you and go back to leading your tribe over to the ports. Let's make sure that we're guiding Komina and Dirge straight over there as well. We don't want you guys losing track of them. Oh, Dirge, you could even come over here and say hello to the new little baby, and that'll give Shadowfire some time to do some quick bunny hunting for her, too. We might as well have Dirge go ahead and pick up the nest for us. We do desperately need that nesting material. That was where we kind of fumbled on the mountains. We always had plenty of food, but the nests were a different story. So bearing that in mind, this might be your final chance to start a family, Luna. Maybe now is truly the time to ask Rex if he would father the next line of Saber Soldiers. So in order to do that, we'll need to make sure that we're placing these Saber Fangs into Luna's mutation menu. I'm kind of tempted to just fill it up. She does have the Ram Horns in her inactive traits, so I guess there's a pretty good possibility that we'll see it on their babies. So let's just try to keep the Saber Fangs as strong as we possibly can. There's not much that we can do about the body situation. As much as I would love to see the heat potty on their babies, it's still going to take a little while before we unlock it in the mutation menu, and we're certainly not going to be doing that here. So instead, I guess we'll focus on the Megaloceros horns, and then we might as well try to keep the mask on them too, because that seems to be a pretty common trait of this family. So come on over here and breed with her, and then I guess the farthest we can go is right here. We want to get her as close to those ports as possible so she can ferry her baby over too. I think it's kind of sweet that he's having his own children so close to Florence's as well. They were always so close in their childhood, and now their babies are going to be close too. So one last time before we end the episode, we'll have Shelby just gather up the last of those stinky fruits, and then let's go ahead and skip the day so we can see if hopefully this will be the start of our next little Saber Soldiers. Identical twin saber soldiers. Oh, and the whale even let out some mighty burst of water, too, to celebrate this occasion. Oh, how long has it been since we last saw twins like this? That is amazing. They are literally identical. Oh, they are so cute, too. You must be over the moon, shiny Luna. Saber soldiers, indeed. They are going to keep the tribe safe from any harm as soon as they grow old enough to fight. Well, it's definitely going to be pretty hard to tell them apart, but let's go ahead and name them. The next name on my list is Avalon. And then as for her sister, her name is going to be Iselina. So now we have two more opportunities to make sure that the Saber Fangs don't die out again. So I think it's pretty safe to say that the Saber Soldier's legacy is going to live on in their family for sure. Now, since we have officially made it to the ports of Whale Island, 
I think this is going to be where Season 1 of the Ancient Legends Challenge ends. That means when we start up again with Season 2, we'll be bringing all of these creatures over to the ports. We should have enough for everybody to pile on, though I'm sure that a few creatures are probably getting a little bit close to the end, so they might be saving this trip for the next generation. Like I said before, I am planning on starting a brand new challenge in between seasons, so I hope you guys are looking forward to that too. The Ancient Legends will be back with brand new stories soon, and hopefully it'll find them the very last two genes they need to complete their collection. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!